good afternoon or good morning rather everyone. Um, welcome to day three of Community College Week. Uh, we are halfway through our events for this week and um, we are joined today by uh, Ms. Emily Clay and Stephen Edwards who are going to talk about our honors program as well as Phi Theta Kappa which is an honor society. Uh, so if you're following us on Facebook, uh, please uh, post any questions you have in the comments section. Uh, for those of you that are joining us here in the meeting, uh, you can feel free to post in the chat. We do ask that you stay on mute so that um, there's no feedback from the presentations. Um, but I'm going to hand it over to Emily to talk about Phi Theta Kappa. Hi, guys. My name is Miss Emily Fulgham Clay, and I'm the chapter advisor of Phi Theta Kappa. We actually have two advisors for PTK here at Delgado Community College. Miss Russell is not with us today. Um, so I will be leading you through what Phi Theta Kappa is, um, what we offer, and why you should join. I'm going to start with a quick PowerPoint presentation. Um, give me just a second. I'll share screen. All right. So we are an international uh, honor society, as uh, Ms. Dingle mentioned, we are all over the globe as well as the United States. Um, but more specifically, we are here at Delgado as an honor society to recognize your academic achievements. Um, the mission of Phi Theta Kappa is really to um, not just recognize your academic achievements, but really to provide you opportunities as well to grow as scholars and leaders. And now kind of breaking that down and what that means is we offer lots of opportunities for um, growth through development in smaller uh, conferences that we might take you guys to. We also work on soft skills here at your local community college level. So as far as like Phi Theta Kappans and the typical makeup of our organization, you can see some of the statistics broken down here. Um, most of our members have around a 3.6 GPA, um, but that is not a requirement here at your local chapter. We require a 3.0 or higher, but that doesn't mean that's where our average is. Our average is about a 3.6. 91% of Phi Theta Kappa members go on to complete their two-year degree and then transfer to a four-year university and complete there as well. Um, so that's an astounding statistic for community college students. Um, and we like to say that Phi Theta Kappans are really taking the cream of the crop um, and helping you guys reach your goals. This is just kind of an infograph about where we're located. So you can kind of see this is not just a local um, chapter to Delgado Community College. There are actually 10 chapters in Louisiana uh, 33 in Mississippi, we're located across the South, Northwest, East, uh, even in Alaska and Hawaii. So we have chapters of Phi Theta Kappa in all 50 states, um, as well as we have some international chapters too, Germany, United Arab, Arab Emirates, um, and we've gained a few others over the course of this year. So Phi Theta Kappa isn't just a local organization, but it's an organization that is international. So you'll find members across the globe. There are some common reasons or common things students say about membership um, for Phi Theta Kappa that they worry about before they join an honor society in general. And one of the biggest worries I hear is that I don't have enough time. Um, I know that as a community college student, you probably have family you probably have jobs, um, and then you're piling on top of that school. So how can I add to my list an organization? Well, Phi Theta Kappa does not require or make mandatory a certain amount of your time. We in fact say, give us what you have. And when you have more, you can give us more. And when you have less, you can give us less. So you can get as involved in Omega Nu, which is your local chapter here, as much as you want or as little as you want. We do have some students who accept membership into Phi Theta Kappa simply for the scholarship opportunities. They wanna be able to apply for the Phi Theta Kappa scholarships because they're going on to a four-year institution. Um, and then we hardly see them as chapter advisors. They may ask us for a letter of recommendation, take a class from, one, from myself, um, 
But other than that, right, I don't see them very much. On the other hand, we have tons of Phi Theta Kappa students who come in, they join the organization, maybe even for just the scholarship opportunities, but then they start to see the bigger picture that Phi Theta Kappa can kind of hone and craft those soft skills I was mentioning um, and make them better business leaders in the community. And so they come in and they might volunteer to be an officer in Phi Theta Kappa, where we take you to conferences across the United States. Um, we've taken students to California uh, to hear renowned guest speakers, Florida, uh, Tennessee, and across the United States. So really, we're an organization that will take as much of you as you want to dedicate or as little of, of you as you have time. I also hear students saying, well, I'm just a technical student, so I'm not really transferring or going on to a four-year institution. Those same soft skills and leadership development skills that we offer to those who are going on to four-year institutions apply to you as well, and will certainly help you in your career. Um, and really the other one that I hear a lot about is I can't afford Phi Theta Kappa. So Phi Theta Kappa does require a one-time membership fee of $85. And I know that's a lot for our students and particularly community college students. So you wanna make sure um, that what you're investing in is going to pay you back for this. And I cannot stress enough the value of Phi Theta Kappa. That one-time membership fee of $85 is a lifetime. You don't have to pay it month to month like a typical sorority or fraternity organization. Um, it's a one-time fee, one time only, and then you are a member for life. If your GPA falls below a 3.0, we don't make you repay the $85 membership fee to get back into good standing with Phi Theta Kappa. We simply ask that you bring it up, especially before you graduate, and then you continue on with your membership. In addition to that, uh, Phi Theta Kappa, as I mentioned, offers scholarships. Um, and when we talk about scholarships, we're talking about $90 million worth of scholarships to Phi Theta Kappans. Um, that's the amount of money that's available. So to me, the one-time $85 membership fee is well worth the investment and the scholarship opportunities that abound. So Phi Theta Kappa's structure here, just to kind of give you a breakdown, here at Delgado Community College, we'll start with the bottom level. That's the local level. That is myself as your chapter advisor. You guys have De Delgado Community College students who are chapter officers. And then you guys would be our future chapter members. And we have over 300 members that we're inducting this semester to give you an idea of um, the reach of Phi Theta Kappa here at Delgado. At the regional level, um, there is a Phi Theta Kappa regional level, which includes all of the chapters in Louisiana, like Omega Nu, like Delgado's chapter, uh, in addition to all of the chapters in Mississippi, those 33 chapters of Mississippi, and we're called the Mississippi Louisiana region. And there, they also have Phi Theta Kappa officers who come from the local college levels. And we have here at Delgado Community College, some of our student leaders who are chapter officers for ourselves are also serving as regional officers, um, which looks very impressive that you are an officer at the regional level of an international organization. And of course, there are also an international uh, level officers here. And so if you're a regional officer, you have the opportunity to also serve as an international officer. Phi Theta Kappa, offers more than just scholarships. Scholarships tend to be the big draw, um, but we offer four free competitive edge career skills course, which is a polishing course um, for leadership skills as well as those soft skills. Collegefish.org is an organization that colleges search to find their prospective students. And so we like to call this kind of like the match of colleges. And so what you do is you put up your profile on collegefish.org, your accomplishments, and then colleges seek you out. Um, so it's kind of a reverse of what you're used to. Chapter projects. Here at Delgado Community College, your chapter, your fellow students at Delgado here are completing the Honors Project, Honors in Action, and they're also completing a 
local chapter project um, that is driven by college officials. Um, so there are opportunities to build those skills, management skills, um, communication skills through your local projects here. Networking and service events, I cannot stress enough that Phi Theta Kappa members are everywhere. Here in this community, it is seldom that I enter a business that I don't encounter one of my previous students um, as a Phi Theta Kappa member, or they'll see my PTK shirt and go, hey, I'm in PTK too, right? And whether they were a Phi Theta Kappa member at Delgado, or maybe at any of our other Louisiana colleges or Mississippi colleges I've even run into, um, it develops a larger network of people that you know, that you can call, that you can rely on. And then of course I mentioned that you have opportunities to serve as an officer um, and develop those leadership skills in officer positions. Now let's talk a little bit more about those scholarships. I mentioned $90 million in scholarship money, um, 37 million in transfer scholarships alone. And this is where Phi Theta Kappa to me is different than any other honor society out there. Most honor societies focus on four-year institutions and they are at four-year institutions. And if they are at community colleges, great. And if they're not, um, that's fine too. But Phi Theta Kappa is um, distinct and that we literally reserve $37 million for transfer students alone. Meaning that's you guys, community college students who are looking for that transfer degree. Um, regional and international events we also offer. So these are some of the conventions we've taken our students to, including Honors Institute, which happens in California um, this past year, and it's moved across the nation every other year. Um, but this is where you really develop how to put together a project, how to get others on board, um, how to time manage those projects. Regional conferences, this is where our guest speakers come in. Um, officer training, we've heard um, John Legend speak at some of the regional conferences, Rachel Maddow uh, as some examples of guest speakers that we take our students to see. Uh, and then of course we offer letters of recommendation. If you served in Phi Theta Kappa and specifically if you've been an officer under myself or Ms. Kim Russell, we are always more than willing to write glowing uh, letters of recommendation, whether it's to nursing school or whether it's to a place of employment in your future or even a four-year institution. There is a little side note down here that says corporate sponsors or corporate partners special offers. One of the side benefits of Phi Theta Kappa is that they do offer discounts at some um, corporate partners, like for example, Geico Insurance. If you're a Phi Theta Kappa member, there's a 15% off Geico Insurance, um, just as one of the many examples. So every semester we celebrate our new members. If you decide to join Phi Theta Kappa with an induction ceremony, this spring, our ceremony will be April 30th at 7 p.m. and we will provide a virtual link uh, on both our Facebook site as well as the Delgado website. It goes live at seven. And we encourage everybody who joins Phi Theta Kappa to gather with your friends and family to really celebrate your success. So just as a quick recap, I know I've given you guys a lot of information. Phi Theta Kappa requires you to complete 12 college hours. So if you're entering Delgado now as a first time freshman, um, you need to complete 12 college level hours in order to be eligible for Phi Theta Kappa. So you can't come in in your first semester. We wanna see you get here. We wanna see you achieve that 3.0 GPA or higher in those college level classes. Um, and then, right, you would be eligible to join. If you decide to join, that's where that $85 one-time membership fee comes in. And then this is our website. Um, if you guys are interested, you could take down my contact information here, eclay at dcc.edu, or Ms. Russell, that is your other chapter advisor here at Phi Theta Kappa. And then I also encourage you, you could also just take out your cell phone, take a quick picture. Um, Phi Theta Kappa, our ptk.org has a really good national website that kind of tells you more about the Honor Society, uh, who we are, 
what our requirements are, and then what we can do specifically for you. So that's pretty much it as a quick breakdown of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Uh, here at Delgado, I would be very excited and interested in hearing from you guys. Um, I can help you, I can advise you and get you on your way. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop share, Nikki. All right, thank you, Emily. Does anybody have any questions about Phi Theta Kappa? Um, I just have a question. Um, I, my only question is, um, I know that it, I thought it said we had to graduate with a 3.4 if we get accepted. No, 3.0 or something. What happens okay. if we do honors program, it turns out to be harder than our normal classes and we don't actually make that uh, GPA? What, like what I happens think then? Does it delay graduation or? So the, the, think, that actually I, applies to the honors program with classes. And so I'll, I'll answer that question because the, the Phi Theta Kappa doesn't require you to take any particular classes, right? Okay. Is that correct, Emily? Yes, yeah, that is correct. Okay. So to kind of clarify, Phi Theta Kappa is an honor society. It is not a group of classes to take. Okay. And what you're thinking of is Mr. Edwards, who has the right honors program which is a yeah set yeah because i'm actually in the nsls already mm -hmm. so um it's the honors program that i was actually interested in so i think what you just named nsls is that the national society of leaderships yeah, yeah. okay so that's a very different organization we're an honor society and we offer scholarships to transfer students specifically okay um which as far as I know, the National Leadership Society does not have transfer scholarship money available. Okay. Um, so Phi Theta Kappa is different. Phi Theta Kappa focuses more on, on academic success. Okay. Um, yes, we do offer leadership opportunities, um, but we are an organization that, rec that recognizes your academic achievements. We require a 3.0 or higher Okay. And you would want to join Phi Theta Kappa before you graduated. Okay. Um, I, ha I have a 4.0 and I've taken 12 hours already. Um, and so far I'm, I have A's in my classes now. So I qualify. So I can do both, right? I, I can do both of these? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and just to further clarify, in order to maintain your membership in Phi Theta Kappa or graduate with Phi Theta Kappa distinction, you do need to graduate Delgado with a 3.0 or higher. Okay. Honors is a different GPA, right? This okay. is Phi Theta Kappa. Okay. So great questions, thank you. Anybody else have questions about Phi Theta Kappa specifically? Um, Emily, there is a question in the chat that someone says they were invited to join Omega Nu, and it says in the email, it's a chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. So is that, that's what you have been talking yes. about? Yes. So Omega Nu is the name for your local Delgado Community College Phi Theta Kappa uh, chapter, right? So Omega Nu is our local organization of Phi Theta Kappa. Um, and if you received an invitation to join, they should be directing you to ptk.org, O-R-G. And you can use the code that was in your invitation um, to sign up for membership. These are great questions. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, all right, so if you all have more questions, please feel free to type those in the chat. We're gonna hand it over to Mr. Stephen Edwards to talk about the honors program, uh, and we'll keep monitoring the questions uh, if you have them for PTK. Okay, great. First, let me uh, begin by reinforcing what Miss Emily just said. Um, if you are eligible for PTK and are invited to join, you should definitely do it. It's the best use of your time and money that you will ever spend. Uh, we are not competing organizations, we are cooperating organizations. And in fact, almost all of my students in the honors program are members of the of PTK. Now, let's see if I can get to, can you see something that says broader, deeper, more complex? Yes, no? Uh, no, not yet. Huh, okay, I see it, but you don't. 
So I am in Zoom. And uh, while Stephen's to... pulling that up, we did have a question on Facebook that just says, what about the fall semester? So I'm not sure if they're referring to um, if they're referring to if they start classes in the fall, uh, how that works. Um, but I will clarify for the person on Facebook that what Stephen is about to tell you about the honors program, you would want to start right away versus what Emily was saying about needing to have a certain number of credits uh, before you can join PTK. And Emily, can you request to join that or is it invitation only? Okay, so Phi Theta Kappa does give us a list of Delgado students who qualify with that 12 college level credit hours and a 3.0, but it is a computer program. So if you feel like you qualify and you have completed 12 college level credit hours, uh, and you do have a 3.0 GPA or higher, then I would encourage you to email me. I'll drop my email in the chat um, and I will generate an invitation for you. Um, so typically speaking, we get the list from Phi Theta Kappa of eligible members, and then we send out invitations each semester. So if you got an invitation, you were on that original list. If for some reason you feel like you qualify for Phi Theta Kappa, um, but you didn't receive an invitation, it could have gone to a junk folder, a spam folder, an old email address, right? There are lots of like computer technical reasons for that too. Um, but you can email me at eclay, uh, I will drop that in the chat, at dcc.edu, and I will be glad to help you out and connect you with the right place. Can you all see my screen at this point? Yes, we can see it now. Yes, okay, great. Um, all right, as I said, uh, most of the people who are in the honors program are also members of PTK. So our organizations overlap and are complementary. Um, you may be wondering what honors education is all about. Uh, as Ms. Emily said, they are an honors society. They honor academic achievement. We're an academic program. We actually offer courses and uh, to be in our program, you have to take various courses and do various things. Um, honors learning, is defined as being broader, deeper, more complex. It intends to be learning-centered and learner-directed, which means that our students are asked to take part in designing their own learning. Uh, it's related to Delgado's culture and mission, and it is very much something that is designed to be done in community. Uh, one of the things we emphasize in honors is the difference between difficulty and complexity. Uh, honors work is not intended to be more difficult than other classes you take. Difficulty has to do with how much effort is needed to answer a question um, or how many people are likely to be able to do something, the difference between easy and hard. Complexity is about what kind of thinking has to be demonstrated and how many different ways can a question be answered, the difference between simple and complex. Or another way of looking at that is this drawing, where you can see complexity increases with the kind of activity, difficulty might just be more activity. So in an honors course, you, you're not supposed to have something where all the regular students read two books and honors students read three books. You might be used to some of that from uh, advanced placement courses or honors courses in high school, where typically those designations mean the course is harder or there's more work. Honors courses at the college level are supposed to be more complex, broader, and deeper. Uh, our courses emphasize learning in depth, research, and creative scholarship. They emphasize multi or interdisciplinary learning, breadth and enduring questions. They also emphasize service learning and leadership. And I'm including some of this because I want you to see that this isn't all just academic stuff. Uh, the Honors Program has sponsored uh, various uh, study abroad travel opportunities. Uh, we went to Athens, Greece a couple years ago, and three years ago we went to Barcelona. So uh, this is all part of it, experiential learning. Honors courses focus on developing written communication skills. You're probably going to do a lot of writing in an honors course. Oral communication skills. Uh, honors courses emphasize discussion over memorization and rote learning, developing the ability to analyze, to synthesize, and to understand scholarly work, hopefully to help our students become independent and critical thinkers, 
and both honors students and honors faculty are encouraged to be intellectual risk takers. Uh, if you're familiar with that picture, you see that's the death of Socrates. So maybe not that much risk. All right, this is a picture of the honors and Phi Theta Kappa office at Delgado. It's in on the City Park campus in building one. Uh, it's on the front of the building on the east side as you come in. It's where if Delgado were a high school, that would have been the principal's office. Um, we're not doing a whole lot in there for the last year because of the pandemic, but I hope that in the fall we'll all be back and able to have this space, which is not only my office and Miss Clay's office and Miss Russell, but also a shared space for honors and PTK students. Um, the mission of the Delgado Community Honors Program is to devise and deliver in-class and extracurricular academic experiences that provide a distinctive learning environment for selected students. The honors program provides opportunities for measurably broader, deeper, and more complex learning-centered and learner-directed experiences for its students. The honors community is composed of carefully selected teachers and students who form a cross or multidisciplinary cohort dedicated to achieving exceptional learning and personal standards. And we have a list of things we value. I won't take your time up with all that, but it's all the sorts of things that you'd expect. Finally, this will answer some of your questions. The criteria for being selected to the Delgado Honors Program is you must have at least one of the following, a 3.0 GPA at Delgado or another college. So you can join the program if you're transferring in from another college. Uh, an ACT score of 22, a high school GPA of 3.0 or higher, or evidence of exceptional leadership or service. And any combination of those things can get you into the program. So you can join if you are a first time freshman coming in, you've never had any college credits, you can start in the honors program. The selection is based on the criteria above, along with a holistic consideration of an application that includes several brief essays. The whole purpose of this is not to keep people out of honors, but to attract people to be in honors. In order to graduate, you have to have all of the following. And we've just lowered this cumulative GPA because uh, in talking to four-year schools, I discovered that our uh, standards were higher than UNO and higher than Loyola. So the, gradu the graduation criteria is a 3.25 out of four for your college work. 15 credits of honors courses, which is usually five three credit courses, and creation of an e-portfolio that includes the work you've done in the program. And we have a, something we're rolling out this semester, which I'm really excited about. Uh, the college uh, has provided money for uh, all of our honors faculty and students to have a portfolio account, which is this fabulous uh, application that works within Canvas, our learning management system. And it's kind of like a combination of your own website, your own portfolio, uh, your own online CV. It's like sort of a combination of Facebook and LinkedIn and your own website. Plus it's a place to showcase your work. And that's an account that you get to keep for life. So this is something that you can use as a tool to transfer to other colleges or as a tool when you're searching for a job. You can share this with potential employers or, uh, or the world. It's really a fabulous thing. Um, the Delgado Honors Curriculum uh, offers courses in several ways. One is courses that are all honors students and it used to be in person, but now it's in person and online. We also have a number of courses that are called blended sections because they involve both regular students and honor students in the same course. So there might be 25 regular students in an English 101 course and five slots for honor students who do the same work, but do it in a deeper way. Uh, we also offer honors option contracts that allow almost any course to be turned into an honors course. Uh, you find an instructor who's willing to serve as your mentor and develop a project that turns the course into an honors course. Uh, this also means that you can now take honors in person or online, any schedule, day or night, and on all campuses. 
The other thing you should know about the honors program is that honors courses fulfill general education or major requirements and do not add any additional hours to the degree. So this does not increase the number of credit hours you need to take to graduate. Uh, we are members of the National Collegiate Honors Council and the Louisiana Collegiate Honors Council. And our students have presented papers and posters at state and national conferences of these various honors councils. We have a very active student honors council, which advises the program and helps devise some of these extracurricular things that we do. And that's all I have. So do you have any questions for me? And yes, you can be in PTK and the honors program at the same time. You can also be in the NSLS at the same time. None of these things are uh, incompatible with one another. The main difference, um, the honors program, you have to do work. I mean, it's, it's an academic program. Instead, you don't have to do extra work. It's not extra classes and it shouldn't be harder. It's gonna be a different kind of work. Um, the honors program is free. We don't charge for any of the things we do. Um, it really goes, if you're going to be in the honors program, you're eligible for PTK and you might as well do both. If you're going to be in PTK, you might as well do the honors program and benefit from the faculty who are taking the time to design special courses and to work with our honors students one-on-one. -on -one. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, so yeah, if y'all have any questions, you can pop those in the chat real quick or unmute yourself and just ask the question verbally. Um, we double check Facebook, if you have any questions there. Um, yeah, Stephen has his contact information in there. We definitely want you to reach out to us if you're interested in you know, joining PTK or getting into the honors program. Like Stephen said, especially with honors, you wanna do that at the very beginning of you starting at Delgado. It's really, really important. So, you know, yeah, the sooner you start, the easier it is, because if you decide in your last semester that you wish you had done the honors program, you don't have time to take five courses in one semester that are in the honors program. But if you start your first semester, then it's really just adding one course a semester, probably. Right. Exactly. And you can take math and English. We have courses in every division. And, and I can't stress enough what Stephen said, that we are really an in tandem uh, organizations. We work together, we go well together. Um, if you are in the honors program, right, then why wouldn't you get recognized for that academic scholarship and be eligible, right, for the $90 million of scholarship money to transfer institutions? And the same would go for Phi Theta Kappa. If you join Phi Theta Kappa, why not go ahead and get into that honors program um, and be a part of that community, right? That really fosters critical thinking um, and development skills that you're gonna use in your career. Absolutely. Um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Shatira, I do see that you're interested in both. So I'll make sure that Stephen and Emily have your contact information. Um, and thank you all for joining us. We have, you know, a couple more days left of community college week. So um, you can still register if you're interested in any of our programs that we have that we'll be highlighting today. We're looking at um, technical programs, as well as our second day of our allied health programs. Uh, we have more business programs tomorrow. We have our biotechnology and chem tech programs on Friday. Um, so there's just a lot more that y'all can participate with in community college week. So I put the link in there if you want to register for any additional events. Uh, and thank you again for joining us today. Emily, Stephen, thank you so much for presenting. I always love uh, getting a refresher on all the information that y'all have. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. All right. Thanks for inviting us. Bye guys.